the collarbone, clavicle, whatever. It looks really good in a nice little skimpy tank top, I know, but it's kind of an important bone. And I actually like, it's a weird bone because you know how we talk through the courses about ossification, the process in which our bones are made. Now, the thing about the clavicle is it has two types of ossification processes happening. Isn't that weird? It sort of doesn't know which, whether or not it's a long bone or it's a flat bone or whatever it is. But this ossification process means that it doesn't actually fully form until you're 25 years of age. How's that? So you're not really an adult until you're 25 years of age because that's when your collarbone's finally finished off. But the thing about this bone is because of its weird ossification process, kids are more likely to have a collarbone fracture. And, you know, maybe it's because kids are more active and more likely to be falling off monkey bars and things like that. But what you'll often see is little kids ending up with a little sling because they've fractured their clavicle, normally in this middle third of the collarbone. In most cases, not all, but in most cases, the doctors aren't going to do much with a clav clavicle fracture for somebody under the age of 11 years of age. Occasionally has to be pinned. Over the age of 11, it starts to get a bit more problematic. And you'll see a lot of collarbone fractures for people in bicycle accidents, motor vehicle accidents, but there's also a lot of collarbone fractures in what's called a fall on outstretched hand. You fall over, you put your hand out to stop and the arm jams up with such force, it breaks the clavicle at the end near your shoulder. Not everybody does it, but when you see a collarbone fracture, it means that you're likely to see somebody in a sling not able to use their arm as well but it still means that you can do work on their legs and their lower body. If somebody's had a fall on outstretched hand, I'd probably be adding a bit of balance work in there as well, okay? Just a hint. The thing too is that you would also respect some of the healing process and recognize that post-clavicle fracture, you are going to see some shoulder problems and neck problems. Remember how many muscles attach to the clavicle. So all of these muscles become affected. They affect breathing and they affect shoulder function. So if I've had a client with a clavicle fracture, I'm going to add some of the platysma stretches. A platysma stretch, just in case you don't remember. Put your hand on your sternum, just near your sternoclavicular notch. Slide that down just a little bit so you'll create a little bit of a tension. Bring your chin down. It doesn't have to be one, you can bring all your chins with you. Bring them down, open your mouth, take your head back with your mouth open. Open and keep your hand pulling your clavicle down. Open and close your mouth a few times. You've got that nice little stretch there for your platysma one of those muscles that attach here. You might want to do some work on releasing some of those subclavicle muscles. For that, I love to do Wincy Wincy Spider. First three fingers, and what you're going to do is pull the fingers along, change your hands, Wincy Wincy Spider. And each time, you just take your arms higher and higher, okay? Down came the spout. Pull it up, and down, those three fingers are just pulling on each other. And you'll feel a nice little stretch and a release through here. Again, if you've seen a clavicle fracture, you really need to make sure you work on range of motion with the arms as quickly as possible. So as soon as the doctors have said it's okay to get those shoulders moving, you get those shoulders moving. I would also just add as your final little thing, make sure that you do a lot of diaphragmatic breath work for that person. Remember, a lot of accessory breathing muscles happen up here around your collarbone, your scalenes, your sternoclanomastoids, your pec muscles. 
all tend to overwork when we're stressed and anxious. When these muscles and these bones have been affected, we might be getting into some patterns of using these breath muscles as well. So let's get into the diaphragm and get those breath muscles working early on before you start working into the shoulder and the clavicle.